Live from the 607, it is the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour, where we're talking sports locally and nationally. Why don't you join in the conversation with the hashtag ODPH. Here we go. And welcome to another edition of the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. Hashtag ODPH if you're in the social media. I am your host, Ken M. And sitting across from me, back from his hiatus from last week, the sound guy galore, JR. Yeah, I'm here. Enthusiastic, to say the least, for the big game this weekend. But we will address Ooh. that a little later in the show. To the right, on the cell phone, trying to get as much information as he can to talk to you, the intern himself, Padawan J. Hello, hello, hello. Shout out to Coach Duffy. He could not make it in, but rumor has it he'll be back sooner than we all think, so shout out to the coach. Folks, we have a lot to talk about. Even though it is the Super Bowl week, a lot of NFL news was going on. Biggest story of the week, though, and I guess the most puzzling per se, Alex Smith, Kansas City quarterback, no more, is now... Heading to Washington. Very shocked to hear this. With a pretty penny, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, guaranteed money up around $70 million, if I'm not mistaken. 71 guaranteed. Yeah. On a $96 million four-year deal. Good for him. you got to think Field Kirk Cousins is sitting there going, well, shoot, where was that money? Well, uh, he was making 30 He's like, all right, that's fine. Doesn't Kirk, bother me. Kirk was, making, or Kirk was making enough but now the question what, what, is, what was that franchise? Because he was franchise tag twice. So what was it? Almost twenty-eight million, I think, his second year. Give take, yeah. yeah. It was somewhere right around that number. Yeah. Give take. But now the question is, Andy Reid and company in Kansas City obviously are ready to give the rookie reins to the offense. Is he ready to go? Hard to say. We didn't really see a lot of him this season. But if you're getting rid of the guy that has led your offense pretty successfully, albeit the playoffs have been very hit or miss depending on how you want to look at it. You ship him to Washington where he's going to go into a very unique uh, franchise that is this going to be the spark that gets them back to playoffs? Who knows? But now it also raises another, another question of Kirk Cousins. Where is he going? Denver. Minnesota. There is a lot of rumors going around. Denver. Is it confirmed? It's not confirmed, but okay. that's the heavy rumor at this point. It's rumored, but Denver is a heavy rumor. Minnesota is a rumor. Buffalo is a rumor. Miami is a rumor. The Jets are a rumor. Basically any team that doesn't have an elite or near elite starting quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, I forget. You know what? Forget all those other teams. Listen, I was so stoked about this deal. First of all, shout out to Kansas City's um, entire coaching unit for scaring Alex Smith enough to have a Pro Bowl season. Yeah, and then turn around shipping him in the year before he's supposed to go. That was clutch. Your job is completely online. You need to play lights out, aka we're going to lose you in a year anyway. Uh, cha ching, we're going to get whatever we can for you. And they got a sweet deal from Washington. <laughs> yeah, they did. Sweet. That's awesome. And then I thought it was even great because I, I like Kirk Cousins. I thought he was great when they took RG three two in that same draft. Mm-hmm. I don't think RG RG three should have even started. I think Kirk Cousins should have been the guy the whole time, but. Redskins, the Redskins should also be thinking, shoot, we could have got Kirk Cousins on so much cheaper than they did Alex Smith. Yeah. And quite frankly, I mean, Alex Smith looks good, but look at the people he had around him. That's true. He had a lot this of year he had Kareem Hunt. Yeah. You know, he's, of course, Travis he's got Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. He goes to Washington. He's still got a stud tight end in, in uh, Reed, mm-hmm. which, which would be a good security blanket. Yeah. So, fantasy preview over there, nice and early. But besides the point, you know, it's, I don't know. I, when Kirk Cousins left, I mean, hey, whatever. It's, I mean, he hasn't left yet, but you know, they're not going to keep him. No. He's definitely. They're going to let him test free agency, and I mean, you know, we have heard Denver, but I don't know how he could avoid Minnesota. And I'm going to be really ticked if I hear Minnesota doesn't even get a chance to put an offer here on the table, because I'm sorry, man. With Delvin Cook coming back, you've got Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Kyle Rudolph, man, that and that defense that you can really anchor. Shoot. But so he's going to Washington, which has got a lot of offensive uh, question marks, I guess we should say, other than uh, their tight end. Yeah, but their whole coaching staff is a question mark. Yeah, everything. They can't ever, there, there's no consistency there. I mean, you can't fault Kirk Cousins for having a bad year because he doesn't even know if he's going to be there. The organization doesn't even tell him if they want him because they keep giving these one-year franchise tag deals. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like it's got to be a little hard for him. Don't he'll, get me wrong. He'll I mean, be on a short leash with the fans, that's for sure. Well, yeah. Well, obviously, you're making that much money. The expectations are going to be through the roof. Well, and, uh, and besides that, you've got a diehard fan base, a loyal fan base with a number of fans who have been 
loyal to that team for a number of years, have been through a lot for over those years, and are tired of seeing the results they've had for those years, and really want to see a turnaround like yesterday. Does he also realize he's walking into a division with Carson Wentz? Yep. And the Super Bowl bound Eagles. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Dak Prescott, who you can't count out, and Eli Manning with, if he turns Zeke it around. Elliott. Yeah. 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 Good luck. He's getting thrown into the fire. <laughs> so we're going to see how he comes out. Good luck, kid. Let, let, let's look at these divisions again. Okay, we went from the Chargers, Broncos, Raiders to Eagles, Cowboys, Giants. Hey. Yeah. NFC is just a tick harder, I'm going to say, in that division. They they seem to hit a little harder. And... But I think he's going to use his motivation, though. I, I think Smith is going to be okay. It just depends on who's around him. That's the... going to be the big factor. My other thing is, does he fall back into being a game manager? Because Andy Reid let him go this year and made him a gunslinger, quote unquote, gunslinger, versus the game manager he was in in San Francisco. So, is he really going to be start? Is he really going to be the guy who start ripping it downfield and in Washington? Or are they going to kind of pull him back a little bit? And honestly, I think he's going to be okay. I think he's going to be a gunslinger. I think for that division, he's got to be. I don't think he can be a game manager. No. I don't think it's going to pan out because he's going to have to get into some shootouts with Prescott, Wentz, and Eli, if Eli's staying in New York, to even you know contend for the games. Yeah, you absolutely have to be, and that's half your season. The other half, I mean, who knows? Let's say because you've got the Dallas Cowboys defense who aren't exactly slouches. You've got the Philadelphia Eagles defense, which they're in the Super Bowl. Right. You know, and you've got the Giants, which, yeah, this year they were suspect, but who knows what they're going to be like next year. Yeah. And now the biggest question after that is, where does Cousins end up? Denver. Minnesota. I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm going to be pissed if they don't really give him a good offer. Because, I mean, all three of our quarterbacks are out the door, with the exception of Bridgewater. I have a feeling they'll probably keep Bridgewater because they've, they've kept an eye on him. They've seen him recover for two years, and everybody likes him. It's kind of hard not to. but Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of places. You could wind up in Cleveland. Yeah, that's that would true. be That would be the real big question mark if they're on the rebound. And, I mean, obviously you can only go up from last season. Yeah. Listen, I pray every day that Cleveland just picks a quarterback and just sticks with it. You've got to ride somebody out. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, but, like, if Kaiser's not your guy, then the, whoever you decide to take next, if you're really going to do this whole we're going to take another person and hope and sit in the whole nine yards, man, you've got you've to ride them. You can't yeah. keep in and out of games. Like, I'm sorry, but you, you've got to pick someone. you got to stick with it and make it, like, at least a two-year, three-year plan. It's hard to get used to the feel of driving a car if you keep changing what car you're driving every other week. Right. And, well, that's going to be some consistency the GM's got to do over in Cleveland if they do decide to go with him, which would completely change the entire complexity of the draft coming up. I was going to say, they have yeah. two picks in the first top – they have two picks in the first five. Yep. Of course, they have number one. I think, what is it, number four is their next pick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you kidding me? So, I – if they're smart, which we all know that they will do, one of those picks they're going to ditch for more first-round picks down the road. You would think one of them is going to go. You know that. You would think. Yeah, you would think. You know that's that's like your your staple Cleveland Brown move is that either number one or number four is going to get dumped somewhere. Mm-hmm. Although the only downside is, is, I guess you really, I mean, when we think about this year's draft, who's really number one worthy that just sticks right to your head right now? Saquon Barkley. Yep. That's that's who I would take number one. Absolutely. After that, game, the quarterbacks game changer. I after that, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sold on any of the quarterbacks coming out. Yeah. I I might be in the minority about that. No, I'm with you there. None of the quarterbacks coming out this year really stand out to me. So, oh, you got to get this guy. But how many people are really jump? Like how much wind? Have, how much like swirling winds have you heard about people actually talking about Saquon Barkley right now? You know what I mean? Like oh god, this guy's got to have number one. I mean, of course you got to wait for the combine. If you're saying number still. number one pick overall, no. But I have heard that the smart money is that some team would trade up to number two to get him. I have heard some. The but the question is, for the Browns, if if they're if they're going to go with a franchise quarterback, do they take him at one? And obviously they have not had the best track record doing it. Nope. It's un. It's very questionable if they would go that route. I think for them taking Barkley would be smart, and then. Worry about your quarterback after because after you got the Giants picking, and then who's at three? Does Indy take Barkley instead of him? No, I think. Or would they take a quarterback? No, and they're going to be a big question mark. I mean, unless you're giving up on luck already, which is foolish. But who knows what you're going to have with that? I, I think. I think Indy should. I, th- I mean, if Indy was going to take anybody, I think they should Indy's get Indy's number three. Yeah, Indy is I three. Think, Thank you. I think Indy should take Barkley because if you think a healthy Andrew Luck with an actual running game that's not a 34 year old Frank Gore. Mm-hmm. It w- it would make sense. That's, that's assuming Luck starts throwing sometime before OTAs. He will eventually. He's throwing. He was sort of throwing. No, he he. I saw the sort other day he was sort close. Of keyword. 
I saw the other day he was getting close to throwing. Right. I mean, he's holding a football. Yeah, it's not throwing, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's like you know, baby some, well, steps. Some, somebody threw it to him and he probably caught it or maybe he flicked it to him. I mean, he had a football in his hand. So he, that memory, you know, it's coming back. It's coming back, but there's going to be a lot of uncertainty, especially with the new head coach. You don't know what the, the plan is going to be moving forward with that. Obviously, you want to keep Andrew Luck if he's healthy, but if he's not, do you take a run at a quarterback and build for the future? Or you kind of go all in about that? I'm thinking, you know what, if you're Cleveland, I think you've got to take, I can use this reference, uh, baseball. I'm, I think you got to get like a Bartolo Colon. <laughs> the wily old guy who's been around way too long but can teach you all the tricks you need to know. Jeff Garcia. Like, you got to get somebody. <laughs> you got to get somebody. You know what I mean? Like, somebody's got to be in there as your as your horse to at least kind of coach these guys and get them somewhere. Get what, get what, what's Brett Favre doing with his Wranglers? Like, get ask if he'll come and be like a no. quarterback coach or something. No. Not Maybe. play. I'm saying a quarterback. Get somebody in there to work with these guys because you can't just keep getting rookies that walk into a broken system yeah. and fail. Well, should, uh, what was it? Jeff Garcia was helping Jamarcus Russell out a couple of years ago, I remember, trying to get back in the league. Call up Garcia. See if Garcia would be willing to Go do talk it. to Peyton. Yeah, I mean, uh, at least, Peyton, at least Peyton, have him go to a camp or something. My God, they Peyton, give something. Peyton's living off that advertising money. Yeah, but shoot, you, like that in, in Cleveland, that's what you need. You cannot keep having – so now what? Deshaun Kaiser's your – Veteran, quote unquote, to teach your no. You go find no. some man free agency. But that's what I'm saying. Like you need yeah. to, go, you need to get somebody. Somebody has to be there to help coach these kids, and yeah. otherwise, you're, it's never going to work. But I think with the new GM, I think they're going to go that route. I just don't know exactly what direction they're going to go in. But obviously, if they took care of Cousins off the board, okay, your quarterback position's locked up, so that gives you a little more flexibility in the draft. Because I think if they do get Cousins, which he uh, he said he would be, I've heard in interviews that he's open to the idea of playing in Cleveland, and it's not necessarily a home run that he goes to Denver because it, last I knew they couldn't make any trades or deals before the free agency mark at March 14th. Yeah. So I'm kind of surprised that the news of Alex Smith going is actually going through. I could be wrong, but with anybody signing for free agency, and I know deals are you know should not be getting worked out until then. Who knows? Well, you know who's going to be a free agent, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of the year? Tom Brady? No. Garoppolo. Jimmy GQ. Maybe. Yeah, but, but you uh, have no, franchise well, he, tags going. He's, he is, his contract is up at the end of the year. That's part of the reason why New England shipped him off to, to uh, San Francisco. But I think the Niners will do everything in their power to keep him, especially if um, he was winning. Back up the Brinks truck. Uh, yeah. Franchise tag. Tag yeah. him for a year. Make him earn it. I don't think he leaves by any means. I think that he's at least there for one more year. But after that, who knows? I'm thinking Cleveland, you know, the more I think about it, I mean, Cleveland could pick up someone like Iron Man Sam Bradford. He's a free agent. You could probably get, yeah. him, on the, you could get him on the cheap. I'm not saying you start him necessarily, but uh, is he a veteran? Yeah. It, it, he, I mean, he's, he's, he's proven, quote, unquote. I mean, he is. He is a veteran. He's been around a while. I mean, granted, he's very injury prone, but at least he could do he, something he's, with he's the a guy work th- with him. He's a guy you throw in the game when you're trying to bail water out of the boat. Yeah, but, I mean, it's a lot of possibilities. I mean, would he even go to Denver, too? Cousin, or I mean, um, Bradford, because obviously, if they don't pull Probably the Cousins not. deal off, I mean, obviously, they're heavily rumored to be the top team to go to. But let's say they don't pull a deal off the of Cousins, where do they go from here? Who? Denver. Well, if Von Miller has anything to say about it, they get Cousins. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, but, they they still have, you know, Brock Osweiler. Like I said, where do they go from here? I mean, you got to give him. Hey, listen, he won a playoff game. Whatever. You could always call Tim Tebow. Mm-hmm. Well, Baseball thing's not really working out. No, so. Well, he's invited to spring training. Yeah, he was last year. Yep. We'll see where Didn't he ends work. up. There's a jersey on the line. Folks, let us know what you think. Hit us up on the hashtag ODPH. What do you think of the Alex Smith deal? Is Kansas City ready with a rookie coming in? And Kirk Cousins, where does he end up? We want to know. We'll talk to you after break. We're now on iTunes. That's right. The Yosho Duro Parlay Hour is now on iTunes. So download, rate, and subscribe. Spread the word. And thank you for listening to the Yosho Duro Parlay Hour. I'm the streetlight guiding you home. Avoid the wrong step into Coming back for segment number two on this week's ODPH. And the UFC was making some moves this week. Along with the WWE. So UFC must have been listening to the episode last week. I think so. We did mention that we did hear a little rumblings that they were going to make a super heavyweight title fight, and they did. Stipe Miocic, who is currently on a very good win streak, 
as heavyweight champion, is now signed to face light heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier. Oh, boy. This is going to be a very interesting fight for a bunch of different reasons. For Miosic, he has been kind of flying under the radar, so to speak, amongst the mainstream fans. That he's not really a flashy fighter, but he does get the job done. Yeah. He's been on a very prolific win streak, if I may use that word. Yeah. And he's been taking out everybody they've thrown at him, especially being the, uh, I don't want to say flash in the pan, but I think the heavily hyped is a better word, Francis Ngannou, who was on a knockout tear before going against Miosic, and Miosic uses wrestling to take down Ngannou for the entire fight and just impose his will. So, obviously, now it's who's next. Well, Cormier has been cleaning out the 205 division for everybody except John Jones. Who's next for him? This fight is very intriguing that Cormier is stepping back up to heavyweight to go for the title. And if he wins, where does that cement him and his legacy? Definitely one of the best fighters of all time, I'd say. Oh, I think he's already there for that. But to win... And beat the current longest reigning UFC heavyweight champion because he's had how many title defenses? Uh, three. Three title defenses has not been done before. If he can stop the streak and win the belt, that is definitely the cement on the legacy. It, it'll cement it, but I think you know how the cement sort of settles, if you will, will depend on how Cormier uh, finishes the fight. If he knocks him out early. Okay, yeah, he's he's absolutely one of the best of all time. But if it's like, you know, goes decision and he he clearly dominates, yeah, he's one of the best of all time, but he's not, you know, for me, top three. Really? Uh, if, like I said, it'll, for me, it'll all depend on how it shakes out. See, I think win, lose, or draw, I think, if Cormier wins. I mean, if it's not a split decision where it goes to the judges and something really weird happens, if Cormier wins, I mean, the legacy is done. And there's nothing left for him to do if he wants. He can ride out to the sunset if he wins the heavyweight title because he obviously will not face Cain Velasquez, and that's oh. already been well established. No, they're, they're training partners, best friends, however you want to define it. That fight's not going to happen outside of the gym of AKA. So after that, what is, is there? I mean, he's obviously going to give up the 205 belt if he wins the heavyweight, or does he go back down and just fight everybody else who's there? Because there are some fights that he could have if he really wants to. But honestly, if he beats Miosic, where does where does he go from there? I think he rides off into the sunset. I don't. I think he drops both belts and says, "Hey, uh, I've had a good career, a lot of a lot of success. Uh, see you later." It makes sense. I mean, yeah, I because, guess, I because guess. if you beat Stipe Miocic, who is arguably one of the best heavyweight fighters of all time, where do you go? There is nothing higher than that at this time, and for him to wait a long. For some other fight that will help elevate his status even more. You're just playing the waiting game against Father Time, which we all know is undefeated. That is true. I mean, I could definitely see that point. I would think, though, if he beats Miosic, he will fight Gustafson at 205. Okay. I, I, I foresee that that would be the fight if he still wants to. For Miosic, if he wins this one, there's only one man left on the radar at heavyweight that he needs to fight. Kane. Yep, Kane Velasquez. That would be the one. And if Miosic wins, he takes over the reign as the GOAT of the heavyweight division. Oh, yeah. there Because you, you can't say if he beats Cormier, that's four title defenses. Yep. And then if he beats Mio, or if he beats Velasquez, excuse me, that's five. Yeah. What else does he need to do at the heavyweight division? Uh, Obviously, he's nothing. not going to retire, and there will always be contenders. But if he does that, his legacy is already stamped. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of possibility there. Legacies are a funny thing because with that fight happening and Miosic is favored right now, Cormier is an underdog, but is very close. Interesting. Legacies are going to be something that people talk about. And one fighter has made a move to her legacy that I guess is going to be head scratching to some, uh, a lot of fun for others. Ronda Rousey, who dominated the women's bantamweight division for many, many fights has now signed with World Wrestling Entertainment. Thoughts on this, gentlemen? Not entirely surprised. I mean, we know how much of a fan she is and 
she, we knew she watched it growing up and such. So I think we, I think you and I kind of knew that it was going to happen eventually. It was just a matter of when. Yeah, I would say so. Jr., you have any thoughts on this? I thought they were having babies. Uh, well, he this had, ain't going to work. He has two kids from a previous marriage. So no, no, but Rhonda was. But Rhonda wants to be a mom. Rhonda was talking about having children um, after her UFC career was done. So this is kind of a a I would say a left field um, happening. Maybe I don't know how you want to exactly word it. Just like I didn't see it really coming down the radar, so to speak. Down down the road for me, maybe. You know, I mean, she's been gone for a while, so I thought maybe that's. You yeah, know, maybe because I know that she did want to be a mother. Yeah, she made it very. So I thought maybe that was that. you know she just kind of went away. Maybe they were just living their own life, which is more than okay. Well, she's filming movies too. Well, right. she's she's doing movies, but the point is though she has signed a full time contract with WWE. Yeah, it is not a part time. It is not a one shot. Oh shoot, she'll be coming to Albany then. They'll be coming many places. All over the place. We can be able to see her. Yeah, probably. Pretty cool. Yeah, if she's going to be, if she's going to be traveling, I mean, I don't know the further extent of their schedule and what the exact dates. If, if it's yeah. only TV, if it's if she's going to house shows, there's a lot of question marks there. But I think for her to come over to the WWE, does that hurt her her legacy as a UFC fighter? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I, I think it kind of depends on how they use her in the in the programming. If she comes in and she's dominant and just starts winning, no, I I don't think it hurts it at all. I think you're almost comparing apples to oranges. Yeah, because it's a totally different um, ball game of what she's doing. Professional wrestling is a lot different than mixed martial arts. Has there been fighters that have crossed over? If you look at the legacy, sure, Dan Severin, Ken Shamrock, Brock Lesnar, mm-hmm. the list goes on. I'm sure I'm missing some people, but my point is with this is with Ronda, she has already left her legacy of her MMA career. Does she need to go back? I think she will at some point. Yeah, she will at some point. But what does she need to do first before she does that? I think her going to WWE now makes sense because the proverbial iron is still hot. There's still intrigue around her. There's still kind of a, not a loud buzz, but there's a buzz, you know, people wondering what she's going to do, what's next for Ronda. Is she going to go back MMA? Is she going to do that? And, of course, this is all before we found out she signed with WWE. So I think it made it makes sense for her to do this now and to sign now while there's still that intrigue. And instead of waiting, you know, a couple of years and going, oh, yeah, I remember you. No, well, I think for, before she goes back to the UFC, she definitely needs to improve her striking. That's where I was going yeah. with that. But, no, it makes sense for her to go because, obviously, her she still has star power. I'm sure that the contract is a very good one from WWE. Oh, I'm sure it is. I think it will help them, you know, in the long run. But it also depends on how, how she is used in the company and what she wants her role to be. I don't think it hurts her MMA career. Um, obviously, the legacy that she's left there is, you know, a, a, the first female superstar in MMA. I, I think her legacy is cemented because I think you look back to what was it? She had a fourteen second win. Oh, you can take a look point. at her track record like when you she lo- came you, in. You look at her track record and you look at how dominant she was. I mean, she had a the fourteen second win. You know, a fight so short you could fit the entire video on Instagram. No, absolutely no. The, the, her thing is she she is that face of the the sport. She was for a time. You can't take oh, yeah. you can't take that away. That she she was up there with the Conor McGregor's, the GSPs, the Anderson Silvas. I mean, wherever you want to judge your face of mixed martial arts, she was up there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And now she's making the transition to to sports entertainment. I think it's going to be an interesting one to see. I think it could be beneficial in the long run for her. And then if she wants to come back, I mean, I, the door would always be open. Oh, yeah, you know Dan is not going to shut that door. Yeah. I just want to see a tag team match with Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey. I fear for whoever think faces of, them. Think of the money, baby. Cha-ching! It could happen. <laughs> no, you, you got feel. You got to have a feeling that Vince has thought that already. Well, I'm sure Vince McMahon is thinking a lot of things right now. I mean, obviously the XFL is a discussion too. But I think for as far as his investment in Ronda, absolutely. I'm sure that he's trying to think of what would be the biggest marquee matchup. If you even want to break it down to WrestleMania, which I know if you don't really follow too much, if you're not into professional wrestling, I could see her fighting Stephanie McMahon and Triple yeah. H being in the corner and The Rock being in, in Ronda's corner to yeah. the Fast and Furious connection. But regardless of that, I think that Ronda coming over is a good business move. And, if she's, and I know that she'll go fully – all in. Oh, absolutely. And make the most of it. Does it hurt her career? I don't think so for, for MMA because I think she was on hiatus, obviously. How she lost her last couple fights have not been you know highlight ones for her. No. But I think that if she wants to come back, she has enough time to improve her striking away from the spotlight. If she is working with a camp in between wrestling days, 
Who knows? But I think the possibility is there. So big week for MMA. Let us know your thoughts. What do you think of the super heavyweight fight coming down the pike for the UFC? And what do you think of Ronda Rousey's move to the WWE from MMA? We want to know. We'll talk to you after break. It's a heartbreak, soul shape, radio attack. Take it all steps forward, no steps back. Hey, this is Vince, the Cowan Man Toy, local MMA fighter, telling you to keep on listening to the ODPH, the 607's up and coming newest podcast. Coming back for the third segment on this week's ODPH. And, Pad, you got some NBA news for us? Yeah, a little interesting trade happened earlier this week. It shocked me, that's for certain. Uh, Blake Griffin, who was drafted, of course, by the Los Angeles Clippers, was sent to the Detroit Pistons. Thoughts on this one? Well, didn't he just sign a big contract with L.A.? Could be wrong. I think so. I'm checking it now. Like a five-year, $173 million, something like that's ringing a bell. I want to say yes, so I'm double checking. Yeah, don't sure. don't quote me. My my brain's is a little fried on stats today, as we have already heard in the episode. But I don't understand the move. I guess um, unless the Clippers are already dumping cap space for I don't know making a run at LeBron, but uh, if possible in the off season. I mean, sending him to Detroit obviously helps Detroit ooh, out. Ooh, yeah, he signed a five year, one hundred and seventy one plus million dollar deal. That going into this season, his base salary, his base salary is $31.8 million, and it increases to 34, 36, and $38 million over the next few years. Ow. That's what I thought he signed. He signed a big deal. Oh. So obviously, they're making a cap dump and sending him to Detroit. Uh, and then if they're going to make a run at LeBron, you've gotten rid of Chris Paul, you've gotten rid of Blake Griffin. You have, what, DeAndre Jordan? And, yeah, yeah, that's kind of it. And that's it. I don't know necessarily if I understand the move other than you're clearing cap space and you're just imploding the team and going to rebuild, which is perfectly fine if that's the direction they want to go in. Yeah, well, they've done that before, and it took them forever to get something. Right, but I think that was also under a different uh, ownership group, too. Yeah, that's true. So I think, obviously, the plan will be to do the rebuilding a little quicker than later. And obviously sending him to the east – does help um, Detroit. I mean, I don't think it's going to be enough to get them over the hump to make a serious run in the playoffs, but it's going to be interesting to see what they do moving forward with next season. So with that being said, LA Clippers are kind of taking themselves out of the, you know, Golden State competition, I guess you could say. Where do they go from here? Boy, I don't even I I don't even know where you start with them. You got to get rid of Doc Rivers. Well, I think so too. That might be your starting point because I, I get the mystique and the aura he has with him from his Boston Celtics days, but it hasn't translated. No, I definitely not, and I'm very surprised to see it, but I think that it's just a different team and a different atmosphere and a different – when he was in coach in Boston, obviously he had the big three with him of Ray Allen, Garnett, and Paul Pierce, and in L.A. it just didn't seem to pan out. I mean, obviously it was a highlight reel every night, but – when you want to make a deep run in the playoffs, and they've had the talent to do it, it just didn't pan out. So obviously, you got to make some changes from top to bottom. Well, looking at the standings, uh, Detroit's not exactly out of it. They're only a game and a half out of the eighth seed. Right, but to They're make a it. serious run into the playoffs, well, there's a shot. How, on a scale from one to pissed, how upset are you if you're Steve Ballmer? Yeah, you're, you just paid a couple billion dollars for this Clipper team, and it has completely imploded. I think that like he, you're definitely in the long haul investment now and you're like oh man well we're, we're taking over la this is giving oh wait lebron may be coming to la but the wrong team um I, th- I think he might be a little frustrated but i think maybe he was given a detailed plan on what they're going to try and do to kind of alleviate some of that frustration plus it also depends on him if he, if he was the one who is kind of you know engineering the plan too i mean i don't know i'm yeah. just speculating that obviously with him uh, as the owner, I'm sure he's taking a more vested interest in the team and seeing them succeed. So, obviously, if he wants to start rebuilding, yeah, move your biggest pieces, see what you can get for him. I mean, obviously, they got some good draft picks coming for the deal. I mean, 
there's a sky's the limit pretty much. Yeah. You know, and I think and I think for Detroit too, as you were talking about, I don't I don't know. I was watching basketball on Wednesday night and you know, it was funny cuz I'm looking at it and it was a it was Detroit and Phoenix. Okay. Now I am not a basketball fanatic as far as my following every single team. But mm-hmm. man, I didn't know who was out there. It was bad. Like I mean, it's it's hard for the NBA because first of all, it looked like nobody was in the seats in Detroit, uh, yeah. which was which was horrible. I mean, there's nobody there. Two, I'm looking at the teams. I'm going, man. I really don't know too many people. Like, do you know any? Could you name three people on the Suns? No. Right. Eric Gordon is he still there? So no, no. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. He was. Like, but it's like, man, I'm watching this game. And I'm like, shoot. But then you, I mean, you got Andre Drummond who's getting 25 rebounds a night, which is insane. But Blake Griffin at least is going to get that like. You've got your big name there that you can kind of notice and you can kind of wrap it around. Because like you said, if you get fans who kind of like mediocrely watch basketball, you're going to watch that game like I did and you go, I don't know who any of these people are. I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to watch something different. But if you know Blake Griffin's going to start in that game with like Andre Drummond and you're like, oh, shoot, this is like Boogie Cousins and uh, Anthony Davis. You're like, oh, man, this is crazy. Like, this is, this, of course I'm going to watch this game. But of course I want to watch these two go nuts. I, I, ca- I casually follow the NBA. I'll watch highlights. I'll look at scores. I'll look at this and that and the other. I haven't known – a lot of Pistons starting players since they were in the finals over a decade ago. Rashid. Yep, Rashid, Ben Wallace, <laughs> Chauncey Billups. Yeah. Uh, they're probably still lingering somewhere around there. They're so, ready, they're ready Chauncey's to make on uh, ESPN or NBA TV or something like that. Well, I'm talking about Ben Wallace, Rashid. They're ready to come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're going to make a run. It's great. Co- head coach and assistant coach. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> bad, bad Piston boys are coming back. Well, if, Here we if, go. if Detroit wants to rebuild, Blake Griffith is a good piece to build around. And plus, a good they, start. They got a cl- I mean, they have some places to go with it, and the East is still wide open. I mean, after Boston and Cleveland, it's kind of a it's kind of a crapshoot. I don't know. I I don't even think it's I don't think it's Boston and Cleveland. I think it's Boston. Boston yeah. is. Playing, I mean, there's there's no Boston and it's Boston. Well, you never know. I mean, the <laughs> playoffs so good. The playoffs are going to definitely have a lot of things going for them that you don't know what team is going to step it up at the right time. And if you recall, I did call this earlier in the year when we did our NBA preview. Shout out Golden State Boston finals yeah no it's it, coming it, it probably is i mean we already had the first uh showing between them this yeah. past weekend yeah so anything is possible with that the only thing i don't think is possible is the rumor of lebron going to golden state hot in garbage. off season do it hot garbage do it sign him no Take way him. never do it i oh, mean stop he could oh that'd be so cool why not Who it would cares? ruin his legacy could, he, oh big deal Whatever. Yeah, people no. are people have kind of forgiven KD. Forget it. Just do it. Kind of is the key word. Kind but of. they have. There are those who have. So there are no. There are some that have. See, but, there you go. But in all honesty, if you put LeBron on that team, and let's say the team stays as it is with Draymond, Clay Thompson, Durant, and Curry, so you add LeBron to that mix. Oh yeah. Who beats them? That's the point. Yeah. Nobody. That's awesome. They win. All right. First off, this is literally an NBA All Star Weekend team that you could just push. And, and you know, just to mess it up, I would put like Clay Thompson on the bench, just have him come off and be like, "Yeah, that's right. We no, have, we have six guys because we can only start five. One, if not two, of those guys would not be in Golden State if they signed LeBron to make cap room. Well, it's funny oh, yeah. you should say this. I went to the ESPN NBA trade machine just to kind of play with some things and see if I could work this out because this is the only way that I could work out the scenario in my head. Uh, I of course put LeBron to the Golden State. I had to offload Draymond Green. Nick Young, Zach Pachulia, JaVale McGee, and David West for this trade to even work. That's totally fine. And, it, and the trade's successful. It, it works. The money works and everything balances itself out. But that's the, you're offloading five players for one. Well, if it's LeBron, you do it. Because you have to do a side trade. But I don't think it happens. No, I don't think so either. Oh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it will either, but I think it'd be awesome just it would be it would be interesting to see the dynamic, but I think one for legacy purpose, LeBron wouldn't. No, I think he's he's finally won enough. He's won his championship in Cleveland, which that's already cemented his legacy. He's been a multi champion in Miami and Cleveland. If he went to Golden State, the team that has been his rival the past three seasons, at least, at least, yeah. Then if he's saying I can't beat him, I join him. He does fall in that KD degree of I can't win. So I'm just going to join. I it. think it'd be in that same category as KD, but larger because KD. Oh, it'd be larger had, scale by far. K- KD hadn't won a title in KC. He was in the finals. He didn't win. LeBron has been to the finals multiple times in Cleveland and won one. No, well, that's the whole thing. But you you can't beat your rivals, so you join them. And plus, I don't think he would want to. 
I honestly think everybody says he's going to go west. If he's going to go anywhere, he's going to Texas, either Houston or San Antonio, if he decides to go out west. Houston makes far more sense, I think. But why? I don't. I, I still. I, I don't understand the the love affair with him going to the Western Conference. He doesn't have to be the number one. He doesn't have to be. And he's got a lot of miles on those legs. That, yeah, oh, that is true. Yeah, but. I think that's the large part of it. I think is because you look at the tread on those tires. You look at the miles on the odometer. He can't keep being the number one scorer, rebounder. You know, like there was. And a, I I get that, but for my for my argument though is if you if he goes out west and he's a role player, you have to jump on the winning role team to win because every team in that Western Conference, for the most part, is stacked and they're going to contend. I think the reason he would go to Houston is, yeah, okay, the West is stacked. We know that. But he goes to a team like Houston where you have Chris Paul, James Harden. You have other players there that you know can deliver. You know can step up so that LeBron can go, okay, I can take it back a little bit. If I have to step it up and I have to be the go-to guy because Paul and Harden just don't have it tonight, I can. But I don't have to be, you know, go a thousand percent every night of the year. And that's why it makes sense to go to Golden State. Because one night you've got Steph, one night you've got KD, one night you've got Clay, and they can all just ride it out nice and easy. And you take a night off, and you see how they do it now, where you see Steph and Clay take a night off. KD leads the team. He he puts up his double double, which is just insane and stupid. He takes a night off, and you've got the Splash Brothers who put Cavs, up 180, and you're like, well, there you go. Cavs fans, I think, would never forgive him for that. If he no. if he goes to any other team, they'll be a little salty because you know favorite son, but eventually time heals all wounds. I think if he goes to Golden State, they will never get over that. Who else could we name if he did go to Golden State is the only other player uh, to ever have their jersey burned twice by the same team? <laughs> no one. Yeah, <laughs> Cleveland no. did it once. Like, Arguably no one. You savage. You Ar- traitor. You ridiculous. And then they burn his jersey. They burn this. They burn a huge plaque right outside the building. And then they come back like, oh, you're our savior. This is fantastic. They turn around and burn it all again. Like, oh, you traitor. Well, <laughs> it's I just, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I can't see him do I just can't see him doing that. And his, I don't think he wants to. I think if for him, it's beating Golden State that matters more. I mean, I'm sure he'd entertain the offer if they could clear enough cap space. That's, but, what, that's why I think but, the smarter thing for him would have been to say, or at least hint, I'm open to all offers because then that kind of leaves the door open. It doesn't get specific saying, I'll listen to Golden State. Yeah, but I think I think when it comes down to it, he's a competitor at heart, and he does not want to have that on his legacy, that he could not beat these guys, so he decided to ride off in the sunset with them. I think he needs, I think he needs to take, and I know this is going to hurt for Cleveland, and it's probably going to hurt for LeBron. But I think his success to beating Golden State is he has to go one place. Do you know where that is? Boston, baby. Kyrie can't do it without him. So if you're going anywhere, you got to go to Boston because I'm sorry. Look what happened when Kyrie's gone. He won't go to Boston. I know he won't go to Boston, but you should. You got to just man up and realize that, hey, listen, I know we may not like each other, but I can take the backseat on this team because Kyrie, my bad. Sorry. I don't think that happens. No. I don't even – Well, he's not going to get it this year with Cleveland. No, he might not get it with this this year with Cleveland. I mean, it should be Boston's year. It should be at this stage. It's almost a foregone conclusion. But there's no way he goes there, especially when Kyrie left and how messy that situation was. Yeah, owner, ownership I'm sure knows the full details yeah. that we don't know, and there's no way they would ever entertain yeah. the idea because Kyrie would be gone at the drop of a hat. Yeah. That would be a foregone conclusion that that will not happen. You have a better chance of him going to Golden State than you do Boston. Yeah, let's be honest about that. If I had to put money, if I had to put money, where does LeBron go? Golden State or Boston? I'm saying Golden State. I just, I just couldn't imagine. I mean, I know, of course, I say that sarcastically that it wouldn't happen, but I couldn't ever imagine LeBron getting that text and going, "Listen, man, my bad. How about we work this out? It's your team. You do you. I like Brad Stevens. Shout out." <laughs> let's let's make it happen. Won't go win happen. a title. And Kyrie's like, no, no. He'd be like, you need to go away. The phone, the like phone would me. hang up. The, yeah, the phone would be hung up before he could even finish the sentence. But and, you know what? Listen, if you don't want to go, if you don't want to go west, and the Boston thing's a joke, and I know you're gonna love this, and I know we've hinted at it before. You gotta go join the unicorn, man. If you br- listen, you want to. Oh, if he goes to the Knicks, yeah. Listen, you want to blow up your legacy? Bring a title to the Garden. Listen, if he and go- shoot, man. If he goes to New York and he goes to the Knicks, I want a camera inside the locker room for when he meets Cantor. Oh, Cantor be gone. <laughs> that would, that would, no doubt in your mind, they would cut Cantor. 
Yeah, can't a flick can't, of a switch. Like, oh, it's not going to work out. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, can't can't if <laughs> LeBron came to New York, Cantor would be gone with before like the day before. That's how you Probably. know the deal would be done. But I don't I don't want to at this point it's it's kind of like if LeBron goes anywhere other than Cleveland cuz I I mean I'd like to see him stay there and try, you know, getting the talent to come there. But if it doesn't happen, I still think he goes to Philly. Because Philly will be on the up and rise. Yeah, I can see that. But but if he could do it at the Garden, I mean, granted, Cantor would be gone. And I don't want to see that because I, I think Cantor is great for the Garden and the Knicks. But if he goes to the Garden and he wins there, yeah, he's he's the GOAT. There's, you've yeah. got done. statues. You've got MSG being being renamed the LBJ Center. Because there, be, I mean, <laughs> there would be some there would be another big, big name free agent that would come with him. You would see a big three there. Oh yeah, uh, some guard of some sort. I don't. I couldn't even tell you who. Who do you know? No, no, <laughs> no Melo's gone. No, no Melo's gone. We we're long past the Melo. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see in the off season, but obviously with Blake Griffith going to Detroit, some moves are happening in the NBA. So let us know what you think of the move, or let us know where you think LeBron ends up. Does he go to Golden State? What does that do to his legacy? We want to know. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're listening to the ODPH. Hey, I'm Mike Pappy from Rye Bread, and you're listening to the ODPH. Coming back for the final segment on this week's ODPH. And we got to talk a little local sports on the local minute. And shout out to the Binghamton Bulldogs yet again. Woo! On fire right now. Winners last week against the Northeastern Pennsylvania Stars and Stripes. 159 to 132. 11 in a row for the Bulldogs. Sixth in the ABA. They're going to be home this weekend against uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania one more time. Saturday, February 3rd. Any more information, BinghamtonBulldogs.com. Go support the team if you're in town. And we also had a little Binghamton Devils hockey action. Uh, they won their last game against Grand 4-3. They're going to be home back-to-back nights against Belleville and Rochester, February 2nd, February 3rd. More information, BinghamtonDevils.com and Rumble Ponies Fever is coming. Folks, get ready. Yankees sent off their uh, spring training equipment down to Tampa today. Yep, it is that time of oh. year. Baseball is coming. But there is one big game still left to be played in the National Football League. There is? Well, we're going to give our quick breakdowns of that. So our Super Bowl prediction, and do we dare say, Jr. do you have a pick in this game? I would like to make my pick last. You want to make your pick last? Yes. Padawan, I kind of already know where this is going, but break it down for us. Philadelphia Eagles, New England Patriots. Patriot, who you got? Patriots, uh, I'm going to say 24-20. 24-20 for the Patriots. JR would like to go last, so I guess I will step up. Philadelphia has had a legendary season in their time in the 2017 Football League. They have a great run with Carson Wentz, and albeit injuries happen, and unfortunately it happened to him. Nick Foltz has taken the reins. They have gutted through some wins against Atlanta and Minnesota to get to the Super Bowl. New England, on the other hand, has had a very interesting season, to say the least. Starting off with an embarrassing loss to Kansas City, questions about the defense, questions about the uh, in-house chemistry, so to speak, between Belichick, Brady, and owner Robert Kraft. And yet, all they do is win, like DJ Khaled says. They have put on a show to get to the finals of these National Football League playoffs, a.k.a. the Super Bowl. They beat Jacksonville. They are now sitting there ready to go. Gronk has been cleared. Tom Brady is ready to go. Everything is going to make up for a phenomenal matchup in Minnesota. That being said, I am rooting for Philadelphia because as a member of Bill's Mafia, I cannot root for the Patriots willingly. But I am willing to say that the Patriots should win this game. I think that Tom Brady is probably going to be in his last prime run in the playoffs, because obviously, as we've always stated, there's one opponent he can't be, and that's Father Time. He is 40, Pat? Yes. 40-year-old, getting to the Super Bowl, 
Going to have to shoot it out against the young gun, Nick Folds. Well, Safe memory serves, he will be the oldest quarterback to start in the Super Bowl. I believe that set is correct. But I'm going to go by you because, hey, me and Stats this week, not exactly the best of friends. But regardless of that, New England is playoff ready, and if you give Bill Belichick two weeks to make a game plan against Nick Folds, the odds are in New England's favor. That being the said case, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be closer than people do think. I know that some of the lines have been a little crazy, but I see this coming down to a late field goal for New England. I see this being New England 27, Philadelphia 24. It pains me to say it, but I think that New England is going to bring home another championship. And then what happens in the offseason, losing the coordinators, possibly head coaches, possibly quarterbacks. Who knows if you buy into all that drama? I don't, but I do know that with the coaching changes that are going to happen, this might be the final run for the Pats. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. JR, you've been waiting all show to give your pick, so the mic is yours. Uh, okay, so here's my pick. They tie because I don't care. So that was great. Um, I will not be watching the Super Bowl because the purple Kool-Aid was not very good two weeks ago. I made a ton of it. It was very bitter, very bittersweet. I'm not ducking anybody. I told you you could have a glass. I'd pour you one, but it didn't taste very good. Let me tell you, after Sunday night, it was it was pretty bad. Um, so I don't care about that. But in other news, there's a more important game than the almighty Super Bowl that is this weekend. I know my faithful Q Nation members stand proud with me. I know we had a tough loss against Georgia Tech the other day on the road, but we are back home. 2-3, save the date, 4 o'clock ACC Network. We take on the number two seed, Virginia. They will be coming into the Dome, which is deadly. And we're going to do something that the Dookie Blue Devils could not, and that is beat them. And we're going to do them a favor and help you guys out in the ranks. So that's the game I'll be watching. Super Bowl, they're probably going to tie Tom Brady, whatever. I don't care. But mark my words, baby. Cuse, watch the game. ACC Network, if you get it in your channel providers. You may not. Check your local listings. Check your local listings. You may not actually get the channel, but you should stream it. I'm telling you. Got to watch out. March Madness is around the corner. Cuse Nation, stand proud. Ooh. So if you want an alternative to the big game, Jar has given you one. But if not, you'll be joining millions, and I do mean millions, watching the National Football League conclude their 2017 season. How it's going to play out, hey, who knows? Hit us up on that hashtag ODPH. Give us your predictions. I'm sure there's going to be a couple blogs getting written about it. Who knows what's going to happen? The game should be fun. I uh, hope it's entertaining, and hopefully, be doing something fun for it. So, until next time, for Sound Guy Galore Jr., for the intern himself, Padawan J, I am your host Kenem. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. We'll see you next time. Promises in the dark. Why don't we just play our part? Cause I'm all